Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the latest edition of the Jake's Take with Jacob L.A. Show podcast. I'm your host, Jacob L.A. Show, the chief content producer and writer of jakesake.com, a pop culture entertainment news website. Now, before we get started today, please, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button on this interview and please subscribe to my channel. If you're listening to any of our audio platforms, please give us a please give us a five star rating and a streaming and stream and please give us a and download this, download this episode. Anyway, lo, today I'm very excited to welcome this incredible actor. He's a guest star on Nine One One Lone Star. He starred in Lucifer, guest star in Lucifer. He also is also the actor, writer, producer, and director of the short film The Fall. And this fall, actually, he will be playing Callan on CW's Walker Independence. So please help me welcome Justin Johnson Cortez to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate that, man. You're so welcome, Justin. It's so nice to play. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's great to be here, getting settled in here in Santa Fe. So this was a nice little time out from getting my home set up. Awesome! I'm glad to hear that we were able to get take a t- take time out of your schedule to do this. So thank you so much because this it sounds very the show is very exciting because it's part of the Walker Texas Rangers franchise. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a it's a great it's a great thing to be a part of. It's a spinoff of Walker, which is on CW right now. I think they're on their season three, going into season three, and that show is great. If you haven't checked that out, please do. Great cast, great people making that show, and uh, yeah, this is a prequel to that. So it's set in you know eighteen seventies. It's a western, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Awesome. We'll get back on that later. But however, I gotta talk. We gotta talk about your origin story. So when did you get interested in performing and how did that passion evolve and desire to pursue a career in the entertainment oh, industry? Yeah, that was, uh, I'd never had a plan to do that, actually. I, I always wanted to do lots of things, I guess. I loved, I loved movies, TV growing up, obviously, a lot of us do. Uh, my mom says I was always in front of the TV acting everything out. But uh, growing up, I wanted to do, you know, I want to be a baseball player when I was younger. And then I want to have my own clothing company. And then I want to be a firefighter. I didn't know what I wanted to do is basically the moral of the story but um my wife actually got me into it she uh one day said i should be a model which was funny to hear and i had no idea what she meant or how how that happened and she just took some pictures of me and sent them into these modeling agencies and they signed me and i wasn't you know modeling wasn't always my thing it, i felt a little awkward doing it kind of like a baby giraffe or something. I don't know. I just never really got my feet under me, but they sent me on a commercial audition and I had to act and I was terrified. And I also like caught the bug though. So after that, I I just dove in started going to acting classes, figuring out uh, audition for short films, student films, anything that I could do. And I just went to everything and anything I got. And I I did a lot of really bad projects (laughs) and, uh, it was all processed, though, man. It was all learning and just slowly made my way. And that's incredible that you just got your start from act from modeling and then moved your way over to acting. So that's in, that's still incredible. Yeah, and when I say modeling, I, I I can't really ever say I actually did do that. I wasn't very successful. Um, it just <laughs> I think I was very awkward in the room, so I don't think it really panned out for me too well. But yeah, I I learned to love acting. It was just kind of this this thing that made me very uncomfortable and nervous and I, I kind of like that it's kind of like an adrenaline junkie chases that I guess I was chasing that like that uncomfortable feeling and the fear of like being in front of people and it, I never I never when I first started I never imagined that this is what it would become but yeah as I did it more I just fell in love with it more and more and I just didn't want to do anything else Awesome. Awesome. So when, but along the way, you must have encountered several different challenges or some to, as you could be get, as you continue your career in the entertainment industry. So what were some of the challenges that you faced and how did you overcome those obstacles? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I tell most people, you know, you meet some people like, Oh, that sounds fun. You know, and I'm glad nobody ever told me this, but I tell people like, unless you really like, it's a passion, it's, you're going to hit a lot of obstacles. You're going to hit a lot of walls. You're going to hear a lot of no's. So you, you really have to have your heart in it for a deeper purpose. Can't, it can't be about, for me anyway, it couldn't be about the money. It couldn't be about anything like that. It's just, I just felt like I needed to do it. And um, 
if somebody would have told me ahead of time how hard it would have been, I probably maybe wouldn't have tried it. So I'm glad nobody did. Um, but it's just, you know, you, you, you're in LA, you're going to all these auditions, you're seeing people that look like you. And then sometimes they don't look like you. you're going in these rooms and you're hearing people do their audition. And, and it's just like, it's a very, the environment can make you very insecure if you, if you're not, you know, you don't have the right energy around you, the right people around you lifting you up. I was lucky enough to have a great support system. My wife is incredible. She's been there with me along every step of the way. Uh, I honestly couldn't do without her. If, if it weren't for her, I, I can't say that I would, I would have stuck it out. Um, it was kind of a dream of ours together, just kind of this thing that grew together and we would talk about it and dream about it. Um, but yeah, you just get a lot of no's. You, you meet a lot of uh, not so great people. And if you're not careful, they could lead you out and down the wrong path and, and you can let that stuff get to you and it gets in your head. And I, I spent a long time, I'm native, I'm, I'm Hispanic and I'm also Irish. I spent a long time not wanting to kind of be in my own skin, actually. I, I thought, you know, I'd go out on these auditions and they would send me in for different roles. And at that time, you know, it was uh, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of white roles for lack of a better term. And, you know, I'm mixed, so I'd go out, but I didn't look like any of those guys. Um, so I actually spent a long time not going in the sun, not wanting to get darker. It was just like a this weird mental thing that, that kind of overcame me. I, I, I tried to conform to something in order to please. And it wasn't, you know, it took me a long time to learn, like, you can't do that. You just got to be yourself. You got to, you got to do what's right here and just, you know, create from a, from a place of joy, as opposed to like trying to fit this box that you may think that they're trying to put you in. Um, so yeah, that was always a struggle, just trying to balance that. It's, it, it's key. Like I said, you have to have a great support system. You have to have people who are lifting you up and, and you got to surround yourself with, with that or else this industry, you know, it could, it could kind of tear you down. Absolutely. And this industry has been very difficult to navigate, no matter if you're in, in the media or behind the camera or if mm -hmm. you're in front of the camera. And the thing is, if you, I'm glad that you, that you that the thing is i'm glad you didn't conform because the thing is we're all unique individuals and if we're all the same thing we're all these squares and circles yep yeah no absolutely man and it's just like but it's so hard you know especially today i'm really glad that when i was first starting out um you know social media has a great place and i think there's a lot of really good being done through it uh but there's a, a side of that that could really get into your head and you start to compare yourself and compare other people's lives. And uh, um, I feel fortunate that that wasn't as active when I first started. Cause I really do feel like I probably would have, I don't know if I would have been strong enough to, to see what people are doing and, and not get beat up on my own side, you know, not beat myself down. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's just another challenge you have to learn to navigate being in this industry is you're going to see people's successes and, and, when you when you feel the joy for the people you see around you succeeding that always like just drives you more uh, you know I've, I've felt both ways and it's it's an ugly side to be on the other side when you're like you know envious or uh, or jealous about what other people may have and and it never is productive it's it's always better to just you know your path is your path you can't control that in, in your time all you can do is put the work into it you know yeah, Amen to lead. that, Justin. It's going to lead somewhere. That. Because the thing is, I actually felt those feelings at times because there's been podcasters who I'm admirers of and met friends of, and I love seeing all their successes. But like, there's times like saying, wait a minute, maybe I mm -hmm. should have done that. But however, at the same time, like you said, we're all on our journey. And mm -hmm. the thing is, if I compare, and sometimes the grass isn't greener on the other side. That number one, number two, some of my heroes like Regis Philbin and Barbara Walters were in their 80s when they retired. I want to be on their path and do some kind of me work with media and entertainment up until I'm 80 or 90. God, yeah. God help me. Yeah, no, I mean, that's a dream doing what you love until you can't do it anymore. And um, yeah, I feel fortunate to have a job currently. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to work so I could hopefully keep doing what I love until, you know, I'm 80 or 90 years old. And yeah, you just kind of go with it, man. You, you never know where it's going to lead. So I just try to enjoy it along the way. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So let's get back on track and let's talk about before. So you started you started out your career landing guest starring roles on Nine One One, Lone Star, and Lucifer. So what? How did those experiences help you grow as an actor? Well, just being on set is always such an experience that that you could just learn so much from. Uh, I love being on set uh, to this day. I I just love being around everything i love showing up when they're building sets i love i love seeing all the work that goes into it i went to art school for a little while so uh, i just appreciate film and television for the massive like art projects that they are this is so much comes together you know you got you got music you got you got video you got you got visual arts it, it's like they're dressing they're building they're, they're doing so much work you got costumes you got it's, it's just blows my mind when you could get all these different things together how many people it takes to put this thing together and it's a lot of work and the fact that it pans out you get a, pro a product out of it is just so impressive to me so i eat it up and i always have so anytime i was able to be on set i did background work as well like i i was i would just show up and do background work on different shows i can't even tell you them now but you know, I wouldn't, I have no lines. I just be in the background pretending to talk to somebody, you know, you can't make any noise, but it has to look like you're in conversation. And I, I appreciated all those steps. I appreciated learning. I learned so much from all of that. Um, it could get, you know, it could get hard when you're, when you're just out there doing that and you're seeing people act and that's what you want to do. But I try to learn from everything I do. And yeah, so being on 911 Lone Star, uh, it was just awesome to get to see people, see people work. And, you know, I always have the goal of being a series regular and, and that was a dream. So just kind of seeing where they're at and what they're doing and, and seeing them do their thing, and you know, just, just kind of puts you on your path. You know, you just keep thinking like, all right, all right, this is good. This is another step. This is another step forward. And that's just how I see it. You know, whether it's a co-star guest star, it's just another, another step forward, man. It's all, it's all leading somewhere. And um, yeah, again, I just, uh, I admire it from so many aspects, not just the acting, the, I admire the producing, the directing, the camera work, everything. It's, it's amazing to be around. It's not for Same everybody. I love the behind the, I love the behind the scenes stuff. It's so much fun. And also looking around, like seeing the sets and like being engulfed behind it. So I love every single minute of it. Yeah. All righty. So let's talk more about Walker Independence. So how did you, so first of all, what attracted you to this project? Well, honestly, you know, I, like I said, I'm Native American, I'm Yaki, but um, Cali in, in the show, he's Apache. So, you know, I was always a little bit skeptical to do a period piece just because I didn't want it to be the same old story, you know, the same old, Indian in the cowboy story. I didn't want to be like a, you know, this sideline character, this this character that you could kind of forget about. Uh, I wanted it. If we're gonna if we're gonna do it, I just want I wanted the Indian to to be substantial, I guess, and I wanted it to be portrayed accurately as we can and just respectfully. And I wasn't sure, you know, I wasn't sure what the plan was, and. You know, I don't speak my native language. Um, so, and I, you get that question a lot being a native actor is, oh, can you speak your, your language? And, and a lot of times there are producers out there that kind of expect Indians to speak every language. It, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like, uh, they're like, oh, well, you could, you could speak Navajo, right? And you're like, well, A, I'm not, that's not even my tribe. And no, I can't speak that. But they, I think they just expect, expect it a little bit some people and there there are great producers out there who don't but uh so coming into this you know they asked if we could speak our language and if if so to do it on tape for the audition and i just let them know like hey i don't i don't speak my language and a lot of you know a lot of other native actors out there including myself the, our languages weren't passed down to us uh for many different reasons and i just asked that they would be you know have that compassion and respect going forward, whether they wanted to read me again or another actor. Um, and then they, they gave me a call and they talked about it. And it, after speaking with them, I knew that they, they wanted to do this right with this character and, and they wanted to approach it with respect. And, 
and also just not make him this, you know, expendable, expendable piece of the, of the plot. I mean, I always grew up watching Westerns wanting to be the cowboy because they had a lot of fun and, <laughs> and they, you know, I tell people they, they had all the action. They, they got all the girls and I was a little kid and I was like, man, I want to be the cowboy. And it's really cool because I want to do something different here. I want, I want, I want kids of the younger generation growing up saying, I want to be Cali. And, you know, I want to, I want to be the Indian. I want to, I want to have that bow. I want to do that, ride that horse like him. And, and so that's, that's really special to me. So that's, that's kind of what I hope to do here. And um, yeah, Callian, he's a, he's a great character, man. So to answer the question, I, I wasn't immediately, I guess I wasn't all in immediately. Um, I was drawn to it just because it's interesting and Westerns just seem so much fun. Um, but I was skeptical. I was a little hesitant. Um, but after meeting the team, it, it was great after getting to know them and knowing where their head was at. It, it kind of, I was all in. And that's incredible because I'm so glad they respected your boundaries and they respected you and your ability to, and your passion for this character to make this to make this request happen. So that's incredible. So a lot your character, so Callan is going to be a very central character as he helps Abby Walker deliver to her independence. So could you tease us what this relationship as the show goes forward between Abby and Callan? I'll, I'll tell you a little, I'll tell you as much as I can, you know, you guys got to stick around and watch. Um, but yeah, Callie and so Callie's a scout. Um, he was a scout for the U.S. Calvary. So he's been around, you know, he's, he's been around a bit. And, and at this time in history, you know, the West is getting uh, settlers are coming and the world that natives knew, the Indians knew at the time, it, it's changing a lot. And Callie and because he is familiar with it being a scout, he is kind of curious about this town of independence. Um, this town is, a, he's not as opposed to it, I guess you would say. He's cautious, but he's curious. And he comes across somebody um, and he, he kind of leads her, leads her into town, shows her where to go. And, but he, he witnessed what happened to her. So he, he feels a certain responsibility there, I guess. And he's, he wants to help her as much as he can. And again, I'm being so careful here because I don't want to give anything away. Um, but it's going to be a, a really fun ride. People are going to, I think it's going to be something that for the younger generation that never seen Westerns or uninterested in them, I think this is going to be a great introduction. Uh, kind of show them that, that side of this, you know, historically massive part of film history and television history. You know, Westerns have been around for so long and, and uh, for this younger generation that may not have seen them, I think this is a great introduction. It, it's going to be exciting and stuff for them. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I, it's going to have a lot of um, a lot of drama, uh, but a lot of action as well. I got I get to do some fun stuff. I really want you guys to stick around. I can't tell you that much. I feel bad because I can't tell you that much. I'll definitely keep an eye on that because the thing is with our generation, it feels like that. Hey, dude, even though it was in a dude ranch in Walker, Texas Ranger, you were like the tail end of that. There's mm -hmm. no any, there's no strong Westerns for our generation, except for like Everwood or even mm -hmm. the, or even when there was, I remember the TBS series that Harry, that uh, Dan Radcliffe guest started and they did a series of Oregon Trail series. Oregon Trail oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And that's the only thing that I ever saw with Westerns from our, gen our generation has only saw. So I just, I'm just looking forward to see what you and the cast of Walker and the Pence do this fall. Yeah. And like I said, uh, one of my goals going in was that kids would be able to look at Callian and be excited about him. And, and based off the stuff we're going to get into, I think, I think we have a good chance that we're going to, we're going to get some of those, those people something to be excited about when it comes to Cali and he, he's a he's a great character but but everyone is you got you got Hoyt you got Abby you got uh I, I keep mixing up cast names with the uh, character names you got Kai you got Augustus and Tom and, and and Kate and there's just so many so so much diversity in so many different ways you know, not just ethnically but uh you know personality wise there's just so much fun here there's so much depth as well and i think people are just gonna 
I really hope people stick around to see it because I, I think they're going to they're fall in love with these people, these cast. I already fall in love with them, the cast members. And and the more I read the scripts, I just I love each of these characters for their own reasons. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's going to be a great um, a great way that we kind of bring Westerns to more people again. Awesome. So let's leave the Westerns and head over because you also starred, created, produced, and directed your short film, The Fall. So can you please describe the film to my audience? Uh, yeah. So uh, how would I describe The Fall? So I made this film a few years ago, and um, uh, it was in the this native film festival uh, called Skins Fest in LA, and we got to screen it there. And I was really happy that people got to see it. Um, I, I made it for myself. You know, it wasn't one of these things that I, I made hoping that it was going to get into lots of festivals and I was going to win awards or anything like that. It just, you know, I wrote this story that I really kind of just felt drawn to. And um, I just wanted to go out there and make it. And it's about a father who's kind of struggling to maintain life with his two young girls after his wife has left due to, you know, drug addiction. And just him trying to navigate. It's like a day in the life. It, it literally takes place in one one day of this this family's life. And um, yeah, it's kind of told through a child's perspective, though. You know, it, you don't leave the house. It's kind of like I just wanted to get, go into something. You know, when you're a kid, everything feels so big, everything feels so massive, and and even your house could feel like this big place, even if it's very small. You know, it could just feel like its own world. And um, so there was an aspect of that that I really wanted to show. I was inspired by a few different film directors that I really like who do kind of, uh, you know, these films that feel like you're watching people's real lives. Um, so I hope that came across, you know, I definitely wanted to feel like, like not a documentary, but, you know, kind of like a hybrid of some sort, like kind of getting a glimpse into something that maybe you shouldn't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a sad story, but there's some heart in it and uh yeah so it's just this father struggling and you know what it takes to be a parent i'm a parent so i know how hard it is and um it's it's difficult to do even with a really good partner and so i can imagine how hard it is to do without a partner or when your partner's struggling and you know i told it through a male perspective a single father because that's what i know because i'm a father um, but I just know there's so many mothers out there that are having a really hard time doing it. And, uh, you know, I always hope there's hope at the end. You know, there's I feel like there always is. And, um, you know, I kind of wanted this film to end with a little little bit of that, even through the struggle. There's always hope, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I got to say, let's we got to start winding down our conversation here. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about social media. So, what are the what are your favorite social media channels? Oh, okay. So, I I am really bad at social media. I kind of touched on it before. I have Instagram. Uh, I think it's just Justin Johnson Cortez uh, on Instagram. Uh, that's the only one I use. Um, so, I'm, I apologize. I don't have Twitter and I don't have Snapchat. I don't have any of the other ones. That's all I got. Um, <laughs> I so don't do Snapchat can, anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't really. Know. I just know that's one of them. But uh, yeah, so Instagram is the only way I go, and that's where you can find me Absolutely. when I'm on it. Instagram is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good, and um, yeah, so that that's where I'm at. So I try to be active on it. I'm I'm not the best. I'll, I'll try to get better. Show some people a glimpse into. Walker Independence and, and, you know, we'll post some cool stuff with Callie and, and, and the rest of the cast. And yeah, hopefully it'll be, um, we'll be able to show you guys some fun stuff coming up here. Awesome. Awesome. So if you had any advice for actors who are trying to advance their career and to land those guest starring roles and to transition into recurring roles, what advice would you share with them? Just keep working on it, man. Just keep working. You know, the world's changed so much over the last couple of years. Uh, self-taping is is kind of the way it goes so you know invest in what you can in when it comes to self-taping you know i i'm not an advocate for having a whole production at my house i i, I don't 
necessarily think that's needed. Um, but you know, you could have a, a, a nice light to set up and a, a good reader and a backdrop, but yeah, make sure you're working on your craft and, and be inspired, keep being inspired, you know, keep watching films, reading books, um, reading plays, watching plays, doing whatever you can uh, to just continue to have the hunger and, and drive to go forward. And remember why you love it, you know, have fun, have fun with it because if you're not having fun with it, then what's the point, you know? Totally, totally. So you share Instagram. We already know that Walker Independence is going to be on CW in the fall, but where can they find the fall? Uh, I think the fall is on YouTube. Uh, I have a, I probably have a YouTube channel that, that maybe has like one video on it. I think I just put it up. So if anybody ever wanted to see it, I can send them the link. Um, so it might be under Justin Johnson Cortez YouTube, um, but it's the fall. Maybe you could throw it up on one of your websites. So I, I could find it and send it to you. And, and that way somebody could find it if they want to. Absolutely. And speak, that is a wonderful transition to what I'm about ready to do. So guys, if you miss an episode of the Jake's Take with Jacob LA Show podcast, visit our Apple Podcasts, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addict, Spotify, and Spreaker channels. It's Jake's Take with Jacob LA Show, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. Now, are you on social media? Because I'm on social media too. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. It's Jacob Elisha, J-A-C-O-B-E-L-Y-A-C-H-A-R. And Justin, get this, Jake, 2022 is Jake's Takes 11th anniversary. Very cool. Congratulations, man. That's huge. Thank you so much, Justin. And guys, make sure because if this interview will be on jakes-jake.com and it will take you to the link to the fall. And I, I might even put it in my YouTube inscribe it clip page. So you can do make sure you do that. Justin, it is a pleasure to talk. It was a pleasure to talk with you. I'm very excited about Walker Independence. And I wish you all the best. And I cannot wait to follow you on Instagram. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah, don't, right, don't forget guys. to watch. All right, I won't. And guys, thank you so much for taking time on your schedules to listen to this and to watch this. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Goodbye.